Today we've been given a big update on Battlefield 2042. It's been pretty quiet over the last few weeks or so. There's been weekly missions and stuff, but we haven't really heard anything about what's upcoming for the game. But today, just now, we received another core feedback initiative post. And there's some pretty big changes to the maps in here, vehicle balance, flow, and it also touches on some other core elements of the game. So we're going to dive in and take a look. So it starts off with traversal. For traversal, we outlined that travel time on foot between baseborn and flags was too long. Our proposed solution is to reduce overall travel time between these areas by moving them closer together. We shared that the first map in need of changes is Kaleidoscope, which through your feedback you've confirmed to us is the right call. However, you've also shared with us that Renewal is another map that really needs to see changes made to it. We hear you on that and we're looking to deliver a refreshed version of Renewal alongside Kaleidoscope as part of season one this summer now originally i think they were just planning on doing the one map which is kaleidoscope but it looks like they managed to bump up that second map too so june july i'd guess when that update season one first drops to give you a better understanding of what to expect here are several examples of our work in progress intent to improve traversal across both maps so this is a picture of kaleidoscope obviously and it looks like the map has been condensed kind of crushed together and then moving over to renewal this is a massive change. This entire section of the map has just gone. I think this is the, or it used to be the A flags and you would go like up on the hill here with a sniper or you take a tank through here, whatever. That's going and everything's going to be focused just in this kidney bean shape here. Another feedback point was that you'd like us to shift focus away from traversal by foot by ensuring that there are more transport vehicles active on the map. That'd be great. Increasing the number of active vehicles on the map isn't something we can do as a short term solution. That's a shame, as this has the potential to impact our separate work on improving game performance. But we do hear you on this and want to do what we can to approach the problem from different angles. One of the ways in which we think we can limit the amount of time spent on foot is to change the distribution of vehicles across our selection pools. And this is a pretty big deal. We're currently exploring how gameplay changes when the two-seater M5C Balti, the Balti boy, features as part of the armored vehicle pool and MAV instead shows up in the transport vehicles category. So they're switching those around as well as shifting the MD540 Nightbird, that's the little bird, out into the attack helicopter pool, ensuring that air transport is more readily available in the world. That's cool, I'd like there to be more transport vehicles available at any time. Cover and line of sight, in our first post we detailed that there wasn't enough cover available across maps to ensure safety when travelling between flags. Additionally, we highlighted that there aren't enough line of sight blockers, introducing an unintended increase on the number of long range engagements. I'd say that's true. You've asked us to ensure that when we're moving around both flags and objectives to new areas, that we're also working to ensure that sufficient cover is available in their new locations. We hear you on that and work is already underway that helps to ensure this standard is upheld. We believe that this should also resolve line of sight issues that have been highlighted by you. Here are several examples on Kaleidoscope and Renewal to show where we not only intend to add further cover via obstacles, but also by elevating terrain to block line of sight. And they've highlighted a few positions here. This is completely new, I think. I don't recognize that at all, or it used to just be something else. And there's some elevation here around the park area. And then up here, we've got some more military style outposts and crates, containers, cement, that kind of thing. And here they've added some cover as you're running up the ramp. And that's a better look at Kaleidoscope G1. Is that new as well? I think that might be new there. And here's just that elevation around the park area to give yourself a bit of cover as you're pushing up towards the flag there. On Renewal, we get a much better look at this bit here too. So it looks like they've added a ton of cover here with containers. As far as I remember, I mean, I haven't played on this map for a few weeks now. This area here used to be all of these weird solar panel things, but they've got rid of a chunk of them there and put a load of crates and cranes and cover there. So I guess as you're pushing up towards that flag, you've got something to hide behind instead of just these tiny thin poles. And here on Renewal, I think they've added some cover as you cross the field there. And there's also a massive change, which I'll show you in just a second. That's a better look at the crates there as you're pushing up to the chimney stack objective. Immersion is another point you've asked us to look at, often through discussion of how the maps feel too clean and pristine. You've expressed to us that you want it to feel like each flag and objective needs to have more strategic value and something that you feel is worth fighting for. I feel like that's a fair point. A lot of the objectives on the maps just feel like things that you might not want to fight over. And they elaborate here as an example taken from the improvements we're bringing to Kaleidoscope. We're updating the gazebo on B1 into a military installment. I think that's what it is there. That's why I didn't recognize it. So they're changing that from a gazebo into a military 
installment will replace grass with mud and cover the area in barbed wire to better immerse it into our world and to bring more improvements to the narrative of our battles. We want you to feel the objectives are ready for battle whilst you're fighting over them. So plenty of head glitch locations here, entries that you can defend or attack. And then it moves on to intensity. For intensity, we outlined that especially 128 player modes, combat can become too chaotic around our objectives, making it hard to determine what's going on around you and where you should be keeping your attention. You told us that in your experience, the primary cause for this problem is vehicle dominance. Yes, totally get that. Based on that feedback, there are several changes we'll make to reduce overall vehicle availability and uptime. So here's some big balance changes here. We're reducing the number of attack vehicles and helicopters that can be active at any time in 128 player modes per category from three to two. This means you'll only be able to encounter two tanks and two attack helicopters available at any time instead of three each. So they're going to be much more valuable now and you'll want to hold on to them. We're increasing the cooldown for attack vehicles and helicopters from 60 to 120 seconds. So double the respawn time. That means that if you take one out, you're not going to instantly see one again and you'll have some time to breathe and move as an infantry squad. As discussed earlier, the Nightbird will be moved from transport into the attack helicopter category and the MC5 Bolt will also be moved from transport into the attack vehicle category. So fewer Bolties and Nightbirds on the battlefield. This is the first set of priority changes that we're able to make to intensity that should see an immediate improvement to gameplay and they're part of our next game update. There's two final things that we also heard and saw shared in your feedback this month that we wanted to bring to the forefront to solicit more input from you. We saw many of you make a suggestion that we could restrict the calling system to only light vehicles and rangers. This would mean that attack vehicles would now only be available via the deploy screen. So you couldn't call them in, for example, using your little iPad that you've got. For flag areas, you've asked if these could be made larger to further spread out combat over this area. These are still ongoing discussions that we're reviewing. So whilst we haven't progressed that discussion into active changes in development, we'd love to hear from more of you on these two things specifically. And here's that big change I was talking about to renewal paths. We outlined that there were too few clear paths between flags, making it unclear where enemy fire could come from or how to best travel between flags. You've told us that you'd like to see this improved lining up cover in such a way that it follows a clear path between objectives. This is something that we're looking to update once we finish moving base spawn and different flag locations closer together. You've also told us that several areas on maps are underutilized and that they serve no purpose for travel. To address this, you can expect us to explore removing the most underutilized areas. A good example of that would be on E1 on Renewal, which we're reviewing to become an out of bounds area to make an immediate improvement to pathing on that map. And there's a picture of it here. And I was a bit confused at first, like what's going on here. But this is before that's that big area where those giant green vats are and there's a little factory building here and two silos. They're just removing that all and making it out of bounds. So that part of the map will just disappear. Hopefully that can help to improve performance as well. When can we expect the first updates in game? We've discussed several changes today that will not only make to maps, but also to gameplay, such as how often or how many vehicles you'll see on the battlefield. The first changes we'll make are to vehicle play and availability, and those will be ready in the next update. Following that, you'll start to see the first updates to flag baseball locations and cover and line of sight on Kaleidoscope and Renewal. These changes will arrive during season one. As we get closer to deploying those updates, we'll be able to share all of the specifics. So some of the stuff we talked about will be there soon. The bigger changes, it looks like they're going to come at the start or during season one. Maybe they'll get pushed forward. Who knows? We're now getting started on bringing the same standards of updates to our other launch maps. That's cool. I don't think they've actually said they're going to do that before. Alongside needed visual changes to make all maps feel ready for battle. So it would appear that they're going back and changing all of the maps. There's a lot of work involved in doing that, so you can expect us to start discussing more about those updates during Season 1 and for the changes themselves during Season 2. So Season 1, big changes will just be to Kaleidoscope and Renewal. And then during Season 2, maybe we'll get another two maps, maybe three. When is the next core feedback? And this is about specialists. We'll return in a couple of weeks with a new topic for core feedback, this time focusing on specialists. We're currently preparing a similar pose for you, as we've done for maps, and we're looking forward to getting that in front of you to open up that discussion. We know specialists have been a major topic for you, and we're looking forward to sharing with you what we've planned to improve their gameplay and fit into the world of BF 2042. So that suggests that there are some big changes coming to specialists. Lastly, we've received thousands of comments from you throughout March. I want to end with another thank you and to say how much we appreciate your dedication and feedback while we continue to work on delivering updates to 2042. So many of you reaching out means a lot to the team and we're looking forward to continue these conversations with you. And that's all we've got for now. I assume there's going to be a patch next month. I think they said early April, so it could be within the first two weeks. 
Don't know what's in that. I've seen some screenshots online from the EA help forum saying there's like hundreds of bug fixes, but I don't know about the validity of those. Don't know if that's true, but DICE did say there'd be a patch in early April. So watch out for that one. And that's all guys. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one.